This card is currently changing the OCG, flipping it on its head, and this is a Promethean Princess level of a card. This new Link 4, which we'll talk about in a minute, has been released in Supreme Darkness, the new set in the OCG, which released support for White Forest and Azamina, for Eldlich, from all things, Goblin Bikers, and Evil Heroes and Gladiator Beasts. In this meta breakdown that we do every single week, we'll talk about all of these and show you the deck lists and explain to you how to prepare for the next meta. But just before that, I think we should sort of like set a baseline of what this card is. This is Lightless Shadow, a Bao Aku. No idea how they're gonna translate it, but this is actually a traditional Japanese name. It's a Dark Link 4, 2800 attack fiend monster, which is a Dark Fiend, thank God. Two or more monsters, including a fiend, so it's not generic at all, but you can, you know, with nightmares and stuff, you can probably climb into it pretty easily. And with Moon also as a Fiend, generic. During your opponent's main phase, you can discard a card from your hand and choose one of these effects to activate. You either destroy one card in the field, non-targeting, or you can banish a Baoku until the end phase and special summon a light or a dark monster from your graveyard in her place. And then, during your standby phase, you can draw cards equal to the number of monster types in your graveyard. Then, you choose the same number of cards that you drew and return them to the bottom of the deck in any order. So you essentially like draw four, return four others. Now, why is this card so impactful? This is a huge end board piece. This can special summon a light in a dark to provide an interruption or destroy one card of the field to provide an interruption. And the fact that you can phase it out until the end phase, protect it from being destroyed. Then during the standby, draw a lot of cards to start your turn with you know, a fresh hand and the cards you need, essentially prosperity every standby phase, possibly. So this is the card that's impacting the meta. And one of the, the decks that is benefiting the most is Goblin Bikers. But look at this popular category rankings. These are the trends. We look at these every single week. So make sure to subscribe. This is honestly one of the biggest changes um, from the last meta report that we've done. Now, in terms of the deck rankings, right, the decks most used are still Malice and Ryzeal and Blue Eyes are still in the top and they are actually still in the competitive top of the OCG. But in terms of the category, what people are actually building more, people are experimenting much more with Azamina, White Forest, Heroes, right, because there's new support for it. So that makes perfect sense. Let's jump into the first deck list. So this is my, why do we even do this video series? So you can prepare and buy your cards ahead of time. If I was a betting man that wanted to play a meta deck, I would invest in Goblin Bikers. Full transparency, because the deck keeps getting support. It's a lore deck out of the new Bellstar story, so you know it's going to get more support. And with Fiendsmith and about a coup and possibly MX Saber and Volker even coming back, this deck is going to be seeing more love and i would think that this is a good investment um they're probably also not that expensive at the moment so we are seeing currently a punk engine which unlocks a level three for you to start with you can also tribute it to special summon from deck with um, um i don't remember how it's called in the tcg but you tribute a monster and special summon a goblin from deck and they are playing an argos engine which is another archetype that has been released in Supreme Darkness, which we'll talk about. Um, this one mainly revolves around um, continuous traps that can special summon themselves, right? So we are seeing punks with Goblin Bikers, with Fiendsmith, which makes just perfect sense. We are seeing um, Codebreaker, Swordsman Zero, and the new Link 4. And the side deck is gonna be very like similar in a lot of these decks. You know, you have your Ultimate Slayers, but Scythe and Lancia are basically in every side deck now. This is probably the spicier one because, believe it or not, Tour Guide is a good card. It's a level 3, it's a Fiend, it unlocks pretty much everything from this deck. This deck was probably designed with Tour Guide in mind because it's a level 3 Fiend. Terratop, Tekatomborg, makes perfect sense, but what's the catch here? So, one Tour Guide goes into Jaugen on your opponent's turn. Just Turguide from the Underworld. So how you do it is you essentially go into Cherubini at 
some point in your combo, which can dump Jargon, the beautiful level three boy from the deck to the grave. And later on during your opponent's turn, you can uh, special summon it back to your field with Lightless Shadow, which is pretty crazy, right? Evil Heroes got a ton of support in Supreme Darkness. The set is actually named after, you know, the Supreme King. And obviously there's a lot of support. This is pretty cool to see. I don't actually know a lot about what this deck does, but you can see um, this is a new card and this is a new card. And of course, the fact that it's funny that they still have Malicious at two. And of course, a Dusted Gold, which is an amazing card for evil heroes. And um, this is probably one of the new cards as well in the trap. So you can see that this deck keeps getting love and it's working for the OCG players. Um, this is the new Supreme King um, Neos Lord, Elemental Hero Neos Lord, which is a part of this deck. And I think that heroes, they have kind of a problem because I feel like their engine is kind of like not really in line with what modern Yu-Gi-Oh needs at the moment, right? You need a lot of utility in the extra deck and these are the decks that do really well. But since this deck is like super xenophobic, we're seeing it with Ryzeal, right? Ryzeal is like super xenophobic. It's only like you're locked into Xyz monsters and that's basically it. But other than that, I think heroes might have a hard time adjusting here, but it is a solid wave of support that we're seeing in uh, Supreme Darkness. Now, this is the big story, the White Forest and Azamina. They got a substantial wave of support and this is like the pure version that you might not actually get to see. We have the new Saint Azamina, we have a new trap card, and a new spell card that allows you to special summon from hand or quick fusion on your opponent's turn. This is sort of like the most vanilla pure version, right? Um, with, you know, three tails, probably not the most um, ideal one, but you can see that this takes advantage of every single Azamina card um, now with the new support and you can see side decks as I've said before in the beginning of the video looking rather similar to one another right with Scythe and Lancia. Scythe is incredible I mean it's still legal and I suspect it's going to get banned in the next ban list in the OCG but Lancia absolutely wrecks Malice which is great um, and we even have Guardian Chimera here because again this new quick play is a quick fusion it's essentially a fusion spell that you can search off of um, Murcielago, and of course, when you're talking about tuners, you are talking about Centurions. And even though there's a small Centurion engine here, it's still very consistent because now with Saint Asmina, you can access um, Synchro 12s much more easily. And since you can do that with Oxala, which is just an incredible card, you can just access it from any part of your combo. So this is how they're adjusting to playing Centurion now. Even though I don't necessarily think, I'm not convinced that the deck needs this in terms of consistency or any other type of support, it should look the same as it does in the TCG overall. Now, this is, uh, I'm gonna be making a video about this. Um, so it should probably already be on the channel. I think this is the biggest story out of this entire OCG meta breakdown episode. Sylvie, with the addition of um, Elzet of the Azamina, right? It's a starter for your Snake Eye combo because this bridges into Azamina cards, which bridge into Sinful Spoils card, which bridges into Snake Eye cards. So you normal summon Sylvie, search for Tails, Tails adds um, Elzet, Special Summon Elzet, Synchro for Arciella, right? Um, and then when this goes to the graveyard as material for Synchro, it adds a Sinful Spoils card. You add Deception, and Deception starts your Snake Eye combo, which is really, really incredible. I mean, this is the future. So even though these are commons, I would invest in them if you're a meta player or aspiring meta player, because this will be a very influential engine. I can see the Bellstar and Wanted getting hit. Now, we don't need this currently. We have three Bellstar, three Wanted. It's not going to stay like this, guys. I mean, these cards are going to get limited at some point. So these are commons. Get them. Tails. Just get one Tails and one Urciela, and you're going to be fine, to be honest. This is the new Argos deck. 
This is a very intriguing deck. Let's open some of the cards. Um, and this is, of course, combined with Eldritch. I'm suspecting we're going to see Rabbit here. MX Saber Invoker, the new Fiend, right? Uh, of course, Bomber, because you special summon monsters on your opponent's turn. And this one is one of the premier archetypes of the new Supreme Darkness set. During your opponent's turn, if you have a continuous trap on your field, you can banish this card from your hand to activate this effect. You zero out an attack. When this card is summoned, your opponent cannot activate cards in response to the activation of effects of continuous traps this turn. And you can banish it from field to activate this effect. And you place two Argos continuous traps face up on the field just with one, this one card, right? And um, what they do, for example, is they gain you attack. You can discard a card and this card becomes an effect monster and um, you can place it back, yada, 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 right? Uh, see Archiver. Let's see why this has synergy. You can use this card, da, da, da. When this card is in your hand or graveyard, monster special summon to a uh, link zone. Special summon this card. If it's special summon, banish it. If it leaves, so it's just an extender, right? And lastly, one of the other premier archetypes of support in this set is Gladiator Beast. We have some new cards. This is one of the new cards where you can special summon it and another Glad Beast from your hand. You have the Coliseum that searches. A lot of really good support. And especially the Fusion, which in my opinion is preposterous because it summons from Extra Deck by shuffling five. I thought we were done with this with Phantom of You Bell. But you can see that now we also got um, Test Tiger reprints in, I believe, Bonanza. So, this deck can do stuff, right? Maybe this is not the most optimal build currently by OCG players. However, this definitely has potential to impact the TCG in some shape or form. This is a branded card, Million Century Ice Prison. So this is Grand Horn of Heaven. You get a special summon and destroy it, then your opponent draws one card, then ends their main phase. So it essentially procs the battle phase so you can activate all your Glad Beast stuff. And during your or your opponent's main phase, if a monster leaves the field other than being destroyed, you can choose and the main phase, skip main phase one, the next one, which seems very synergistic. This has been this meta game breakdown for the OCG. We got Argos, we have Glad Beast, we have Supreme, Neo Lord, Elemental Heroes, and of course we have the White Force down the Azamina taking over with a new very strong Link 4 that is going to be you know, very influential, I think, to the game as a whole. Um, we're doing this every week. So if you want to keep up to date with the OCG stuff, this is definitely the place to do it in. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.